All right, Jules, time for more quick yes. hits. Yes. Inter are also through the quarterfinals after sweating out a scoreless draw against Porto. Jules just wasn't pretty, but it got the job done. It got the job done. Well done, Nana in goal. Chanoglu got play of the uh, play of the match. It was a defensive performance, which you kind of expected in a way, maybe. I still don't know how Porto didn't score, I have to be honest here. Yeah. <laughs> I love that Inter are through, of course, but for this Porto side, especially that at the right, I think the last chance or the just before that one where they hit the bar, the post, or Nana saved, there was a block. There was like, yeah. thing, how on earth you didn't score? It was ridiculous, but well done to Inter. Yeah, uh, well, I think well done to Inter Simone Inzaghi too. Because yeah, after of course. they lost on Friday, they, there were people who wanted him fired. And Inzaghi said something, because Inzaghi is kind of low key, he looks kind of goofy in his interviews. And he said something which I think really resonates with me because it's a skill I don't have. He says like, don't mistake me being polite with me being unintelligent. Yeah. And I thought that was a great quote yeah, because he's yeah. always very polite yeah. and he's always low-key. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? The guy's got stones as yeah, well. Exactly. And well, yeah, done, well to done to the team too. for bouncing back. Yeah. And more than a thousand Inter supporters who bought ticket in the Porto end of the ground and traveled to Porto, of course, were not allowed into the stadium gap. UEFA have opened an investigation. From all the, 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 the witnesses that we hear, it was a bad mess. So, yeah, so th there's a couple of things going on here. One is there's footage which looked a little bit like Paris of yeah, all these guys being like riot police, like stopping them. And, you know, it looked like they Just were on a concourse. Just parking them there, yeah, outside. It's hard to tell if you don't quite know whether that was an unsafe situation or not from from, from what I've seen, right? I, I don't want to compare it to, to, to Paris, although it looked like that a little bit, yeah. but we don't know. Um, you have to have rules about this. Now, in terms of public safety, if you have a rule that you cannot buy tickets in the home end if you're an away supporter, and you apply that rule, and it's clearly written that that is the rule, I don't have a problem with them being left out. If that is not the rule, if there is no clear rule like that, because look, I can understand, if you have a thousand of these guys showing up in intergear in the Porto home end, that could be problematic, could be a public safety issue. I don't have an issue yeah, with yeah. that. But you have to have clear rules yeah. to go and decide what this is, and you can't mislead people about this. Yeah, talk, talk and to them. Look, I did it years ago, mixed in with the home fans while I was supporting an away team. But you do that, you're low key. You don't go there and, you know, create problems, right? Yeah. And if that happens, clubs will look the other way. Yeah, yeah. But I, we see it in the Premier League, we see it all the time, right? Like, you know, a, a London club playing Manchester United and some United score and somebody celebrates and the stewards come over and say, okay, yeah. sir, check you out. We'll move you elsewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, but you have to have clear rules. Yeah. Let's stick with UEFA because President Alexander Sheffern sat down on Gary oh Neville's dear. YouTube show and had some interesting th things to say, like the fact that UEFA would need to look at the rules on multi-club ownership and that maybe it's not such a bad thing. I don't believe that. I really don't believe that this is something he's, he has in his mind. I think if that goes through, I think this is the end of football. I think for me, this is unacceptable. This is unbearable. You can't have two clubs owned by the same people facing each other in the Champions League, the Europa League. I don't care what what competition this is just not on it's not possible and and why would you score such an own goal like that or maybe you just put a filler up and see the reaction and now you're realizing that everybody's on you and people saying like this is outrageous UEFA can't do that then now you say like, okay maybe it was not a good idea but is he I doing this to is he saying this in public to take pressure off his buddy Nasser maybe with yeah yeah, yeah and that's exactly what I said on French radio last night I said maybe Nasser said hey why don't you put a filler see how it goes you know because you agree with me, right? This is not 1, possible. It can't, it can't happen. Percent. Uh, if you want to have multi-club ownership, that's fine. You cannot play in the same. And what he says, like, oh, but I don't think the players would go and intentionally lose. <laughs> is this even the appearance of improprieties exactly. that is, is, isn't, isn't good here? Um, exactly. Yeah, just, it's, it's just not a good look. Not good. Bad idea, Alex. Yeah. Move away yeah. from it. And the Definitely. fact that, you know, it happened with Leipzig, uh, Leipzig and Salzburg a few years ago when someone was grandfathered in. Uh, fine, if you want to grandfather those guys in because yeah. you did it before, that's fine. But going forward, no Definitely. more, no mass. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.